Hi everybody, this is a Q&A session for first graders advanced English. A couple of you guys asked me a question about the advanced English material. So here is my answer. So uh, mainly this uh, Q&A uh, is about uh, mainly this audience and the conventions of drama. So I'm trying to answer the questions. So IDKM asked me about like around uh, uh, 12 questions and JY asked me about two more questions. So I'm, I will try to answer like 14 questions here. So please be advised. Okay. So the first question asked by KM is at page 168. This uh, underlined question was asked. Okay. So while you are studying plays in this Ivy Lyric course, both reading and seeing the play in the performance are regarded as legitimate experience of the plays. But there will always be an expectation of close study of the text of the play, the script. So what this underlying sentence means that in order to understand fully, in order to fully understand the play, in order to fully understand the script, play and script is the same thing. Okay. So you are always expected to do a close study of the text itself. So in other words, in order to understand Twelfth Night fully, you, you need to watch the performance, but before you watch the performance itself, you are expected to study closely of the text itself and of the script itself of the Twelfth Night. So you study first of the text, close study, then you watch the performance drama. Then you will eventually will have a full understanding of the performance. That's what this underlying sentence means okay and moving on to a second uh, question page 60, 168 attending a performance or play can give you a sense of your own reaction as well as those are people who are sharing that experience so also ask me about the meaning of those are people who are sharing that experience so it means you know let's say that you went to a theater to watch the uh, Twelfth Night performance. And if you watch it, the Twelfth Night in the theater, you understand, you know how other people feel about the Twelfth Night. Because you are not the only person watching the drama, you're watching the drama with other audiences. So actually, you're watching a performance in the theater, you would also recognize, you'd also understand how other people who watch the together, who watch tw Twelfth Night together, would feel about the drama. That's what this means. Okay. And on page 168, while references to the reader are in some cases acceptable, generally, IB examiner will expect you to both possess and communicate that you are well aware that you are discussing plays whose completion lies in performances. So also KM asked me a question about this underlined part. So what it means is that in IB course, you have a particular performance, you have a particular exam, you have a particular style of assessment, for instance, called IOC. In IB course, official IB course, you have to uh, have a assessment called international or uh, individual oral commentary. So in those assessment, individual oral commentary, you have to make uh, your you have to make your own, your own critical comment for instance you have to make your own critical critical comment on one play let's say for example you have to make your comment about like 10 minutes okay you have to make a comment on pretty much all perspective of the 12th night so when you do that it is better for you it is better for you that you have to discuss you have to show your knowledge about the twelfth night, not only about the plot, but also you have to express your knowledge about other conventions of drama, showing that you understand the twelfth night in complete form. It is written for performance. It is not just written for novel. It is not just for written for script. You have to express your knowledge about conventions of drama like stage directions and effect of the twelfth night on the audience. What kind of effect? this Twelfth Night will make, and you have to mention your knowledge that you are aware 
of the effect of the audience and you are have uh, also you have to mention something about other uh, elements just like um, structure or the or the language or the settings or the characters so you have to express your knowledge when you discuss your comment about the 12th night that you understand the 12th night in its complete form it's a performance not just a script or novel so you have to express your knowledge and in that way you will have a better score in the individual oral commentary in official IV course however we're not doing an individual oral commentary in our course so you guys don't need to that much worry about um, this good question though good question okay and here moving on to another question page 168 sometimes the two sets of conventions are very close and overlap. So some are very precisely connected to such matters as the words, plot, characters, and setting of the play, and are more likely to be found in the list that follows. Others have to do with technique, with performance, and are generally not included in the list. So also this underlined part is a question. So here, in our paper, in our conventions of drama, it will talk about two sets of conventions. Okay, there are two sets of conventions. There are two sets of traditions in drama. One set is about the literary technique. Okay, one set of dramatic technique is related to a literary technique, and the other set of convention and the other set of tradition is re relating related to our actual performance, actual acting. Okay, so there are two kinds of two sets of convention. One is related to a literary technique, and the other one is technique uh, related to acting or performance. Okay, there are two traditions regarding the drama about the drama, and one some are very precisely connected to such matters as the words, plot, characters, and setting of the play. So one kind of the technique, one kind of literary technique is about the words, about the language and vocabulary that's used in Twelfth Night. And also there is technique about the plot, such as like beginning, rising action, climax, and falling action, and characters, how you create your characters, and how you set the play, place, okay, how you use the light, and how you make your background. So these techniques, about words and plot and characters and the setting of the play, it is all related to a literary part of the drama. And they are more likely to be found in the list that follows. So this paper that we're studying here in on, on this paper, this paper will focus on the technique, literary technique of drama. Okay? So you are more likely to find out about the literary technique in our paper, in the list that's coming later on. And others, other kind of technique, other kind of technique related to a performance and acting that uh, others have to do with technique of performance and are generally not included in the list. So there are other kind of technique related to performance and acting. These are not included in our paper. So we're not interested our paper that we're studying here in our lesson, our paper is not interested in the technique about the performance, not interested in the technique about the drama, about the acting of the play. No, we are more interested in the technique of the literary part of drama, such as like vocabularies, plot, and character and setting of the play. So we will study in the later part more techniques relating to, related to this part, word, plot, character. Okay, and page 169, ID JY. JY asked me a question to, uh, he is quite confused with a monologue and soliloquy on the side. So please clarify difference between those uh, three concepts. So here, let me try explain. I don't have my pen mouse at home. I have it at school, so please understand my uh, rough 
drawing or rough writing. I, I don't have a pen mouse. <laughs> okay. First, monologue. Okay? Monologue. Let's say that there are several actors and actresses in a stage. Okay, there is a stage and there are, there are several, several actors and actresses. They are having a conversation together. Okay? They are having a conversation together. Suddenly, suddenly, this one player, this one actor, start to make a long speech. While they were having conversation together on the stage, suddenly one actor start to have a long speech. That's a monologue. Okay? While they were having a conversation together, suddenly one speaker, one actor start to have a long speech. It's a monologue. Okay? And let's say that there is only one actor on the stage. Okay? There is only one actor on the stage, and this actor, all his own, he speaks a long speech about how he feels. That's a soliloquy. Okay? He is there on the stage, only one person, and he speaks long speech, soliloquy. And there's a uh, other characters. There's other several characters on the stage, and we have audience. We have audience here. You no, know, they were having a conversation. Several of them have a conversation, right? Suddenly, suddenly, one speaker, one speaker make a start speech, and the other person, other people and actors, they pretend, they pretend that they are not listening. They don't hear. They pretend that they don't know what this one person is saying. Only the actor and the audience can hear what this one person is saying. That's aside. Okay? And I hope it answers your question. Say why. And it leads, this question leads to our second, next question. Here. Uh, KM also asked me a question about page 169. The asides give the actors an opportunity to add something under their breath. So, you know, this one, act, one actor, you know, while they were talking together, several actors, this one actor speaks under their breath. They speak really uh, silently. They speak really like, you know, small, small voice. So, for the benefit of the other characters. For the benefit of other characters, it means for the help, for the help of other characters. Because, you know, there are several other actors and actresses. One actor starts to aside. You need help. You know, these other characters, same stage with you, they have to pretend that they're not listening. They're not hearing what you're truly saying under your breath. So the actor can perform aside from the help of other characters, for the benefit of other characters. Other characters stage with you, t together with you, they have to help you, and they have to pretend that they are not listening what you are saying. Only you can do it, right, with the help of other characters. So for the benefit of other characters means from the help of other characters, you can perform aside when you are together with other actors and actresses on the stage. And also, uh, page 169, just as in novels, for example, there are likely to be secondary or minor characters in most plays. So, you know, uh, also ask me the question of meaning in this underlined part. So, just as shown in the novels, in the drama, you know, just, as, just as shown in the novel, in the novel, in the novel, you have main characters and you have secondary and minor characters in the novel too. So just like uh, shows, just like showed in the novel, in the drama, we also have main characters and we have minor characters and secondary characters. So that's what it means, just as in novels. Just as showed in the novels, in the novel they have a main character and secondary characters. 
So in the drama, we have also secondary and minor characters in most plays, in most drama, just like in the novels. Okay? And these characters have roles of varying importance. So these minor characters, they have different level. They have different level of different importance. Okay? So in a Twelfth Night, we have like Clown, we have Maria, and we have Olivia, and we have um, Sir Toby and Sir Andrew. We have several minor characters. And these several mi minor characters, they have various level of different importance in the drama. Okay, that's what it means. Roles of varying importance means various different level of importance of those minor characters in the drama. Okay. And also on the page 170, there is a Freitag's triangle, and she has a uh, KM asked me a question about this term of causes downplayed and effect stressed and cause and effect stressed, cause stress and effect downplayed. So what it means that, have you guys heard about the cause and effect relationship? I guess you have, a, you have heard about the cause and effect relationship, right? Cause and effect relationship. So, you know, for instance, like in Twelfth Night, Viola. Viola and Sebastian, they were traveling to foreign land on a ship, and the ship wrecked because of a typhoon, because of a tornado. That was a cause, okay? So, uh, Viola and Sebastian were traveling on the ship, and they met a typhoon, and their ship wrecked. So that was the cause. Ship wreck of the Sebastian and Viola is the cause of everything happened, right? So because she wrecked, Viola was sent to this country like Illyria. So, you know, she wants to find a, a brother and she has to survive and she has to come back to the house. So she has to pretend as a man. Okay. And since Viola was pretending as a man, all kind of this episode happened as a result. That's the effect. Okay. So, because she pretended as a man, all kind of different accidents happened as an effect. So, you know, this cause and effect are referring to that kind of element. So, at the beginning of the stage, the beginning of the stage, usually the cause of story is downplayed. Downplayed means ignored. Okay? Downplay means ignored. Oh, such a terrible writing. Without my pen, mic, mouse. So, uh, the cause is ignored, downplayed at the beginning. That's why, you know, in that way, things get more complicated and things get more interesting, you know. And effect is more stressed. So the result is more stressed here at the beginning. You know, she had to pretend as a man. The result is more impressed at the beginning, you know. So uh, by pretending a man, all kind of interesting and complicated situation happens here. So that's how what happens in the beginning. Usually the cause is ignored and the result, result of acting, pretending as a man is more stressed, more emphasized. And in the middle, at the climax stage, climax stage, both the cause and effect are stressed. Both <coughs> cause and effect are emphasized in the climax situation. So the tensions between escalating with each other and and the re resolution stage usually the cause is more emphasized and in fact is ignored you know the fact that she had to pretend as a man is ignored at the ending because you know and more cause is more stressed so why she the reason why she had to pretend as a man is more uh, emphasized at the end of resolution. In that way, you know, the drama or story explains why, why Viola had to pretend as a man and why she had to cause all kind of this interesting complication in during the story. So the cause is more emphasized and the explain at in the end resol resolution and try to explain the situation of Viola and try to 
settle down all the stories and conflict in the stage, in the end resolution stages. Okay, so that's what cause and effect means here, page 16. Okay. And also page 160, 160, the unknotting of the thread of the plot. So she asked me the meaning of unknotting. Okay, so What is this? Can you guess? <laughs> what is this? So I guess this is a thread. Okay. I wish I had my pen my mouse. This is a thread. Okay. So this thread is now knotted, right? This is a knotted situation. In the drama, the thread is knotted. The event or the issues or, or your story is complicated. It's knotted with each other. But in the ending resolution, ending resolution, it comes on nothing. So this is a before stage, this is a before stage, and in the after, after stage, things get on nothing, so it becomes straight again. The thread becomes, everything is solved, situation is solved, conflict is solved, issue is solved. So thread becomes on nothing, on nothing, in the ending resolution stage okay so this is before and this is after so that's what unknotting of the thread of the pl plot means in the end resolution everything comes to solved problem is solved so this thread thread is unknotted unknotting okay and there are in fact so many ways in which plays can conclude that is important to remain flexible when applying lab labels so also asking a question about the meaning so label here another word label means names okay so we learned several different names in Freitag triangle for instance like we have an exposition we have a rising action and we have a climax and we have a, a resolution stages so we learn these name names and labels but you know these names and label when we apply these names it's better that we have a flexible attitude of applying these names to each stage because you know so many different play so many different drama they have their own way of making a structure in different stages like expo exposition and rising action climax and resolution so we have to have a flexible attitude to applying those name in those different drama because different drama different play they have sometimes their own unique way of us uh, making a structure of the drama so it's better for us to remain flexible when we apply those labels when we apply those names as exposition rising action climax and resolution okay And also page 160, the action of the play may fall into such a division as act, open a larger unit, and the scenes, either subdivision or act or unit of their own. So, you know, play, play like Twelfth Night, we have a scene, we have an act, okay? We have divisions, we have section, such as like act, okay? Twelfth Night has act, act 1, act 2, act 3, right? So, usually in the drama, act is a more relatively larger unit. Okay, we have act. 
So we have Act 1 and we have Act 2 you know, here. And in those uh, larger unit of Act, and we have subdivision. We have smaller section, smaller se section of Act, okay, or smaller section of Scenes. So scene is more, scene is a subdivision of act, to mean the scene is a smaller unit of act. So you have act, and inside act, we have different scenes. Right? We have scene 1, and we have scene 2, and we have scene 3, and we have scene 4. Okay, so that's what means, okay, the play consists of se several division and act is larger unit which include all the sub subdivision scenes and scene is a smaller section of the act so scene is within the act which is more smaller unit of the act okay i hope it explains and also jy asked me a question what is the relationship with negro woman between stella and blanche which one is more, which one is more, Negro Woman is more closely related to Stella or Blanche? Well, Negro Woman doesn't belong to anyone, okay? She is just a neighbor of Stella, okay? She is just a neighborhood of Stella. So we cannot necessarily say that Negro Woman is more closely related to Stella or Blanche. No, she's just one of the minor characters, okay? Not belong to anybody, okay? Good question. So. I'm glad that you guys are studying really hard. So uh, good to hear your question. I hope that I, I I hope that this answers your questions. And if you have more questions, you're more than welcome to send me your questions. Okay. So good job, everybody. Keep up your good work. Thank you for your questions. Okay. See you next time. Bye.